so I hope uh, we can get started and uh, begin with day two. So for the first session, I would like to introduce you to our keynote speaker, uh, Mr. Munesh Jadon, who is the CEO at ZNet Live, who will be talking about how to accelerate the profitability with cloud in today's age of digital transformation. So, uh, sir, I hope you can hear me. Over to you now. Yeah, thank, thanks, Swati. Uh, I'm just uh, trying to share my screen. Uh, just, just give me one minute. Uh, I hope uh, you will able to see my screen now. Uh, yes, sir. I think uh, we can get started now. Okay. Thank you, Swati. And uh, welcome all of you. And uh, uh, in the day two session of World Cloud Summit uh, today. Uh, we are going to talk uh, regarding the accelerate profitability with the uh, with cloud in the age of digital transformation. So uh, things are changing <coughs> these days. Uh, people are moving to the cloud. So we will talk where 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 will my uh, profit. So how we will uh, earn the earn the profit or how we can save the uh, IT cost so that uh, we can increase the profitability. In, the, in this uh, transformation age. So uh, is digital transformation really happening or it, it's just a buzz? So let's see, uh, it's just a buzz or it's a really happening. So um, if we, we can talk, uh, we will talk uh, uh, before two years ago. So that time it was buzz, but now it's really happening. So we can see, with some statics here. Uh, analyst says that prediction of uh, cloud spend is going to increase by $266 billion by 2020. And 66% uh, of the enterprises are already using cloud. So in some way, so there is multiple ways to using the cloud in terms of, uh, let's say I'm using the email on on cloud or on any uh, any platform with the like Microsoft Office 365 or Google Apps. So you are you are using actually the cloud. So this is cloud, and in some ways we are using cloud, right? And 87% uh, of the enterprises want to use the cloud in some ways, and but they want to retain their existing infrastructure also. So they want to integrate with the existing cloud. So they want to move to the cloud, some, some applications or some workload they want to move to the cloud and some workload they want to retain their existing infrastructure. So it's a, it's a very good opportunity for hybrid cloud also. So it's a need uh, to get their organization need to be ready to act because it's not not if and buts that I, I will I I have to move to the cloud or not. We have to move. So there is no choice actually. So is this time for change? Yes, absolutely. Because uh, eighty percent of the global IT budget we are we are just uh, did, uh, just uh, spending on the maintenance part and. 28% of time we are spending on the administrative tasks. So obviously we have we have to change. We have to change the mindset. We have to change uh, ourselves, and uh, we have to think beyond the boundaries. And we have to just move on the cloud, basically. <laughs> so th this is just a data is shared uh, uh, by Gartner. So what what is the ways? So how what is the options to move to the cloud? So it's not a easy task for for us to just think and uh, and uh, move, moving to the cloud. So there is there are various hurdles, various uh, legacy applications uh, we are using. So it's not a small task that uh, we will think and we will move to the cloud. So the, there are multiple options. So right now uh, we are using uh, let's say virtual servers in my premises or in any data center or or physically dedicated servers. Uh, either we have virtualized or not, but in some ways we are we are using already the legacy infrastructure on premises. So it can be in your on premises, in your office, or in your data center, or any or any uh, third-party data centers. So in some ways 
we are using virtualization or non virtualization technology or or on premises and non cloud technologies also so so how we can move to the cloud where where will i move so there are multiple challenges are available let's say uh, some uh, application i'm using very very old and it's not a easy task for me to to move to the all the application to the cloud so we can do some assessment that uh, uh, some applications let's say some low hanging fruits uh, we can move to the public cloud immediately let's say example we are using email so email is the easiest way to move to the cloud so first of all we can plan okay th these are the 100 mails or or 500 uh, email ids we can move to the any cloud like office 365 google apps or some other hosted mailing solution we can move and some uh, personal data documentation or our communication system communication let's say uh, intercommunication softwares we can move to the cloud easily we can we can do and it's a very very cost effective it's a very cost of cost effective uh, within two dollar or three dollar in a month per user you can you can use you can migrate to the any infrastructure so so we have to bifurcate the data which data i can move now and which data i can move later or is there is there any uh, hurdle or is there any compliance requirement or any legacy system requirement where I cannot move them then you can keep it keep it on your premises and use the hybrid cloud opportunities hybrid cloud technologies so in the hybrid cloud technologies also uh, there are multiple options are available in the market let's say uh, with the Microsoft you can use the Microsoft Visual Windows as your pack or uh, as your stack or VMware or OpenStack. If you are very very keen to to use the open open technologies, then the OpenStack is there. And and uh, with the connectivity side, you can uh, you can connect the public cloud and private cloud infrastructure with with some technologies. Let's say with Azure is the uh, uh, Express route is available, and uh, with the Amazon also the Amazon Direct Connect is available, or some other technologies you you can use uh, with the for the hybrid cloud basically so so if you have already invested uh, in the IT or if you have already in invested in the servers then uh, you can retain your hardware and uh, further you can uh, uh, you can increase or you can increase the capacity or you can uh, increase uh, your infrastructure to the public cloud and you can connect both of both of them so it will it will help to to connect between two infrastructure or you can also uh, uh, increase the capacity on the cloud so there are multiple ways available in the public cloud segment we can you can migrate you can use any of the public cloud like Azure Amazon or a, a, any other technologies and the private cloud I, I already mentioned that the uh, open stack or VMware or Azure stack you can use so the, this is the uh, uh, TCU analysis uh, we have uh, we have uh, taken the reference from Azure, Azure cost calculator that if uh, if you will invest on on premises then then uh, TCO calculator will show you how we will invest now and how you will benefit in the longer term so if you can if you uh, the more you will modernize or more you will invest in the cloud the lower your operational cost will be so so it's a time to invest in the in the public cloud and uh, <coughs> And uh, in the longer term, we can just uh, reduce the costs. And uh, some uh, biz uh, business analytics uh, also uh, creating some opportunities. Let's say uh, some business decisions also there. Let's say I don't want to invest in the capex. I want to just invest in the opex so that uh, I can save the money in the monthly basis. I can invest in the business and my data center also. Its its technology is old, so I want to just uh, modernize my data center also. And I want to increase the capacity of the data centers or increasing data center operation cost. It's it's a it's a major hurdle also. And some security requirements also there. Uh, I want to secure my business uh, in the modern uh, with the modern modern threats or some regulatory compliance also there. So I want to be ready uh, with the market or with the uh, with the uh, with the security. 
and uh, let's say some uh, also my co-location contracts are also expiring so it's a very good time to just move on the cloud because because it's, it's not a good idea to just uh, uh, invest in the operations operational costs and uh, let's say my support support software uh, my uh, end of the support is the software is the is the problem so uh, let's say support is the ending then uh, it's a it's a very good time to just move on the cloud <laughs> or some on premises support contracts also is expiring that it's a it's a right time to just move on the cloud so my, uh, as i said all, uh, earlier that migration decision is not a simple decisions basically uh, we have to do multiple things basically first of all i have to do the your cost analysis okay what will be the uh, the cost uh, benefit now and on and after moving to, moving to the cloud so there is any benefit or not or and uh, it's uh, it's too complicated or where even even to begin because we all want to move to the cloud but but where how how will i start so this is this, these are the questions we have already so this is the very very simpler approach to the migration uh, first of all we have to disco discover okay which applications which vms which storage we have to migrate and we have to do some pcu analysis and roi analysis okay Okay, this are the these this is the this is the workload, and uh, uh, will I get any benefit or not? And uh, uh, after that, there there's, there uh, should be some reports. Okay, this is the reports, and uh, after that, we have to plan for the migration. Okay, which which application, which virtual machines migration, uh, we have to migrate to the cloud, on which uh, workload we have to retain in the in the on premises, and the conversion. Okay, it's, it's a very good part because uh, people are converting the application to the content containers in the Docker container, so that it's a very very easy to migrate between the cloud also, right? So so we uh, we have to think on the migration strategies and optimize the application to uh, so that we can easily uh, migrate to the cloud. And after that, after moving to the cloud, it's not the end of the story. So continuously, we have to uh, monitor the health, performance, and cost management. It's a very, very important part uh, because it's a, it's a it's a, you can say it's a very if you are not using cloud in the perfect way, then it's a drawback also. So first, so uh, we have to just monitor the cost, uh, how much uh, we are using in the in the cloud because. Sometime, sometime the VM is running, but we don't know. Okay, it's it's using or not. So it's a very very important to just monitor the cost with the uh, reports and all. And uh, and uh, uh, after that, uh, access to the advanced feature in the data services and all. So it's a very very important. So this is the life cycle basically. Uh, discover okay which data we have to migrate, assessment, convert, and we have to do some remediate uh, application and uh, these tasks, functional performance tasks, optimize and some database migration, database optimization all we have to do. And then we have to do the data sync and then it's done. So this is the typically uh, migration life cycle basically as of now. And uh, these are the top barriers of cloud adoption as per the uh, reports. Uh, so these are the oh, these are the adoption uh, uh, adoption barriers. Uh, that's why the people are little bit hesitate to just migrate to the cloud. Uh, to the cloud. Okay. What are these? They are the assessment and planning. Okay. So there, there is a there is a headache. Okay. There are multiple data center, multiple uh, multiple uh, uh, locations, multiple servers, multiple stories. Okay, how will I do the assessment? And some cultural mindset. Okay, okay, I'm I'm not I'm not ready to move to the cloud because of the X Y Z reasons. And deployment and migrations. Okay, we will do the deployment, migration, training. We will do. So this is the uh, this is the also the hassles. Okay, and <clears throat> an ability to integrate with the existing architecture. Okay, I have some legacy architecture. For how will I integrate? And uh, Compliance and regulatory re regulatory uh, problems and lack of training 
uh, trained resources for the management. So this is the very very important part because most of the uh, most of us are ready to migrate, but there is a, there is a problem with the trained resources. Okay, which technology should I migrate? Okay, and who uh, 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 will do the assessment? Who will manage after the migration? So there is there is a, some uh, trained resources problem also is there. So uh, we want to take a few polls here. So uh, Swati, can 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 you start the polls, please? Here the very interesting results are there. Yeah, so this is the result. Basically, uh, as expected, uh, people are moving to the cloud, and people are want to move to the cloud. So, so mindset has been changed. So it's just a, a decision time. Uh, it's a very good result, actually. Uh, public cloud adoption is increasing day by day. Uh, yes. Uh, can you can you just launch another clone, please? So what is your biggest barrier to the digital transformation? Okay. Let's see the result. So this is the result. Basically, uh, uh, some problem is pl uh, uh, planning, and uh, the second, uh, the first of all, is the integration with the existing infrastructure. Yes, it's it's a it's a great uh, answer because uh, it's a it's a very good opportunity to just use the hybrid technologies for integrating with the existing infrastructure and monitoring security compliance is okay. This is also a uh, hurdle barrier and uh, assessment planning okay so th these are the things we were talking about only yes uh, yes so this is the another call uh, another poll so if you choose the managed services provider can you please list your top services you will be keen to procure from, okay? Good, interesting result is coming up.
Good. So this is a very interesting result. So people want to outsource entire IT infrastructure. Good, very good. And the DC transformation, and then backup backup services. Good. So this is the result. Swati, uh, shall I proceed or is there any problem? Uh, so the polls are done. Uh, you can proceed ahead with the next slide. Okay. Thank you, Swati. So how to overcome uh, from this uh, uh, cloud adoption barriers. So what, what 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 is the ways basically? So the ways is you need to just, con, uh, just uh, partner with any managed services providers who can just uh, take the, all the headaches and uh, you can seamlessly migrate your infrastructure to the cloud. So it, this will be simplify your journey to the cloud. And uh, what the benefit? Benefit is the they will do that all the deployment, migration, assessment, cost optimization, security, monitoring and all. And uh, they work with the with the, the vendors like uh, uh, Microsoft, AWS and all. So they will get uh, fast support so that uh, you will not take, you will you will not having any issues in the, your infrastructure also. And the proactive support and expert guidance. So this is the benefit to just to work with the managed services providers, right? So, so as I said before, so there is a uh, top barrier is how to assess, how to do the assessment of the existing infrastructure, whether I should go in the public cloud, private cloud, hybrid cloud, or which applications should I mig migrate first, who will do the cost optimization, monitoring. So these type of headaches, the many services provider can take. So you will not have having an issue for that. So, this is the uh, about ZNet Live, basically uh, long, the long story in short, basically. So these are the uh, competencies we have. We, have we, we work very, very closely with the Microsoft AWS and other public cloud providers. We have also deployed our own public cloud infrastructure in India and uh, uh, abroad also. And we have, we are having uh, certified engineers Uh, just hold on. Yeah. So we are having uh, certified engineers on Microsoft, AWS, and uh, Red Hat, and all. And uh, we have the partnership with the Microsoft and uh, uh, 10 years plus uh, partnership is available, 10 plus global op uh, offices, and uh, 17 years of experience. So we are working uh, since uh, 17 years and started from hosting. Uh, with the legacy hosting, shared hosting, and all. Now we are we are working with uh, uh, large players uh, in in the uh, cloud, and <clears throat> the uh, all the service regions are available across the globe. So we 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 have we have partnered with Microsoft and AWS to provide the infrastructure across the globe. So it's not that we are providing uh, infrastructure or the services in India only. We provide across the globe. So we have the very good relationship with these guys uh, so that uh, we can give you the proactive and the fast support. So our mission is very, very simple. Uh, we work for customers, we work for partners in the digital transformation age. Our mission is to think beyond technologies, create new capabilities and better business outcomes for our customers. So this is our mission. So very, very simple. So this is all from my side. Uh, is there any questions then you can ask? You can type in the chat window and I'm happy to answer. And this is my email ID. You can contact me directly if you have any question or any questions.
Hello everyone. So uh, let us know if you have any questions. You can type in on the chat window and uh, we'll be answering them. Manish, there is a question from the audience asking about what kind of uh, services do ZNet Live offer uh, on the backup side of things? Okay, <clears throat> on the backup side, on the backup side, uh, we uh, uh, we provide backup on on any uh, service locations, and we have. Uh, uh, partnered with uh, Microsoft for that. So, uh, with the on the Azure and the AWS on the both platform, we provide managed managed backup services basically. Okay. Is there any direct sync with SQL backup? There's a question from someone. Is there a direct sync with? Uh, SQL backup. Yes, uh, direct sync with the SQL. Yes, so direct sync with the SQL backup is available. Yes, of course available. And uh, uh, this facility is available with the Azure, uh, our Azure data uh, with database backup, uh, database uh, sync uh, services. It's available with the SQL server. It's available. Yes. And uh, looks like there is a very generic question. Uh, what mm. will be the cost of our own cloud server? Uh, no, so he, I think uh, he's asking, can you please explain a bit how it will cost effective? So, uh, so if uh, you will calculate the TCO, then uh, it will be very, very cost effective. And uh, because it it will in the TCO you it will include the administrative charges, your business losses, and uh, and uh, the maintenance patches and all. So if you will calculate on the longer term, then it will be beneficial. So in the next session also is the is the special session for that only for, from the AWS. So you 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 can understand the TCO calculation and all in the next session. <laughs> And uh, next okay. session, and uh, yeah, yeah, please. I think there's another question. What will be the cost for our own cloud server? Yeah, so uh, it will, it will. If you, uh, what will be the cost for own cloud server? So if you are talking about the private cloud, then uh, then then you have to invest in the capex and. Uh, <clears throat> And you can use any uh, private cloud technologies like uh, Azure Stack or OpenStack. Uh, so it it will uh, completely depend on the workload, how how much workload you want to migrate to your own cloud, or how how much uh, uh, workload you want to uh, just uh, deploy in the, your your own cloud. So it's depend on the workload workload only. Can you help me understand how credible ZNet Live is? How can I believe and trust ZNet Live as a credible partner? Okay, it's a very interesting question. So we are we are working from last 17 years. So you we have seen the entire journey, and uh, you can just send me a mail. I will send you the entire uh, deck for for about the ZNet Live. And uh, we work very, very closely with these, with Microsoft and AWS to provide the managed cloud services. So, so we have the uh, competencies, we have the uh, certification with our guys. So, obviously, it's a, it's a, uh, it shows the credibility of the ZNet Live. Still, I will uh, we will send you the complete deck. Okay. I think uh, there is one other question related to that: is how do you differentiate? ZNet Live with other cloud companies. What is your USP? 
okay so so we focus on the on our technical expert, expertise so we uh, we uh, uh, if if any customers or any partner want to work with us we assign first of all a single point of contact or we can call it the account manager so we will uh, he will or he she will just coordinate with you regarding your existing infrastructure and uh, uh, work with you very very closely and our support sla is also is very good so uh, uh, you will you will get a very good support from here and the back to back uh, we work uh, with uh, microsoft and aws to provide the uh, world class infrastructure for you world class infrastructure with a managed managed capacity okay uh, can we set up our own cloud infrastructure with low cost can we start with just 10 servers is it possible uh, even uh, public cloud uh, you can start with the two servers or one servers also so it's not a not a uh, big uh, hurdle to start with the with this uh, uh, with that with with this amount of servers but some technologies uh, also have some limitations uh, so that uh, we have to see but uh, public cloud can be implemented on two servers also and it can be a low cost so low cost uh, it's depend on the uh, depend on the your forecast of how you will forecast if you are forecasting it's uh, some uh, with the some other technologies or which uh, vertical you want to target so it's de completely depend on your forecast so what will be the cost and which technology will be suitable for you so it will completely depend on that so yes you can start with the at least two servers also okay you mentioned about the site recovery. Uh, what is the definition of site recovery? Definition. Okay, site recovery. Okay, so you, if you want to just uh, 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 just set up another site. Let's say you have a, you have in-house few servers, and you want to just. Uh, <laughs> Uh, replicate that infrastructure to other third-party uh, cloud then you can replicate that and you can recover in case of disaster so this this kind of uh, site recovery is there it's it's, it's a uh, disaster recovery basically DR okay can you please uh, brief us on how traditional data center model has changed and what is the latest trend as per Zednet Live's experience? Actually, a uh, traditional data center model uh, has been changed. So the people are moving to the hybrid cloud, basically, right? So uh, if you are talking about the data center business uh, model changing, so they are also adapting the third party cloud infrastructure so some large data centers in india also they are providing their own infrastructure also they are they are integrating with the public cloud infrastructure so that they can provide the wide range of service locations uh, to their customers so it's not a limitation let's say one data center is available in bangalore so so their customer want to just uh, have infrastructure in the singapore so they have integrated with the with Azure or, or AWS and providing the infrastructure on, on the Singapore data center. So it's not a uh, road blocker for them so that, that they are just providing infrastructure in India. So it's, it's just changing uh, with the time. Is, uh, <clears throat> is cloud profitable in India or outside India? Uh, it's a compl uh, right now uh, we cannot say uh, that it's uh, not a profitable in India. In India also the profitable, but little bit uh, slightly the bandwidth cost it's slightly uh, expensive in India. So if you if you are just using the standard bandwidth, that of course the India is the cheapest option in terms of cloud. Does uh, Zednet Live offer multi-cloud services? Of course. So I'm, I'm just talking from the starting. Uh, we work very, very closely with Microsoft and AWS, and we have our own cloud also. So you, you can, uh, uh, we can provide managed multi-cloud infrastructure on our uh, platform. And in the backend, for the, you, for the managing the multi-cloud, we are using the RackNap. 
uh, there uh, you can see your reports your uh, uses your billing your uh, your cost how uh, and your forecast with that uh, platform because um, in the back end we are using that uh, as a rack map Manish, I think one last question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can you share any experiences of any customer who has benefited from ZNet Live in terms of return on investment? Yeah. So we are we are doing uh, some case studies with few clients already. So uh, we have your uh, contact uh, uh, contact email ID. So we will share the complete deck of the ROI calculation of the existing customer in some time. We will send you. Uh, how do you price public and private cloud offers? Is it user-based pricing or resource-based pricing? Is the user uh, resource-based price pricing? Okay. I think there was one comment from one of the attendees who was sharing his insights to say, as per him, uh, that outside Indian cloud providers, they provide cheaper services with good server connectivity. This is just uh, uh, someone from the audience is sharing their insights. Yeah, uh, yeah, so that's that also, that, yeah. yeah, so that also I have said already. So a little bit of bandwidth is expensive in India. So otherwise, uh, that's why, so, uh, but but the, uh, with, the, with the time, uh, the bandwidth price also low, uh, coming down. So this, uh, this price we can get in India also in some time. So this is not a not a huge dif uh, you, This will be not a huge difference uh, in some time uh, There's another question about how good is Zenit lab email spam protection is in the cloud. Yeah, so we provide uh, uh, Email on the cloud with the Office 365 and uh, some Google Apps also. So uh, preferably we, we prefer uh, uh, Office 365 uh, for uh, SMBs and enterprises. So it's backed by Microsoft and uh, we are using the Microsoft technology to just prevent the spam uh, spam in the emails. So it's a, it's a very reliable service. Okay. Uh, I think uh, with that, uh, we are. I think there are no more uh, questions. Uh, back to you, Manesh. You can close from your end, and then Swati will take over. Okay. Uh, thank you for joining us, and uh, we will keep in touch. Uh, I have shared the email ID. If you have any concern, any feedback, just please uh, share your feedback. Thank you so much. Thank you for attending.